This is the third lecture of principles of management course. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss two main parts. The first one is working today. And we are going to discuss the question, what are the challenges of working in the new economy? And the second part is organizations. And we are going to discuss the question, what are organizations like as work settings? Working today. which is presented in the question, what are the challenges of working in the new economy? There are many of the challenges organizations can face. Most important of them, work in the new economy is increasingly knowledge-based. And, and the intellectual capital is the foundation of organizational performance. Also, organizations must value the talents of a workforce whose members are increasingly diverse with respect to gender and age and race and lifestyles. In addition to the forces of globalization are bringing increased interdependencies among nations and economies. As customer markets and the resource flows create intense business competition. The fourth challenge is ever-present developments in information technology are reshaping organizations, changing the nature of work, and increasing the value of knowledge workers. Fifth, society has high expectations for organizations and their members to perform with commitment to high ethical standards and socially responsible ways. Also, Careers in the new economy require great personal initiative to build and maintain skill portfolios that are always up to date and available in a free agent economy. Finally, the changing nature of managerial work emphasizes being good at coaching and supporting others rather than simply directing and order giving. The second part of our lecture is titled Organizations and presented in question, what are organizations like as work settings? First of all, Organizations are collections of people working together to achieve a common purpose. Note that the description applies to organizations of all sizes and types that make up the life of any community, from large corporations to small businesses, as well as non-profit organizations. Also, the broad purpose of any organization is to provide goods or services of value to customers and the clients. A clear sense of purpose tied to quality products and the services and customer satisfaction and social responsibility, all of these factors can be an important source of organizational strength and performance advantage. Organizations as open systems interact with their environments in the process of transforming resource inputs into product and service outputs. Now look at the figure. The environment supplies 
resource inputs, which are people, money, materials, technology, and of course, information. Now, the organization creates value through work activities that turn the resources into outputs, which are called transformation process. which turns an input into product outputs, which are consumed by the environment. Now, look at the array that goes from outputs to an input, which is called consumer feedback to take correction actions when needed. One of the most common ways to assess performance by and within organizations is productivity. It measures the quantity and the quality of outputs relative to the cost of inputs. And as the figure shows, productivity involves both performance effectiveness, which presented in goal attainment on the left side of the, of the matrix, and performance efficiency, which is presented in resource utilizations in the matrix. Now, the matrix have four boxes, as you see. Uh, the first one, which is purple, the organization in this situation, effective but not efficient, which means goals achieved but resources wasted. The yellow box, the organization is neither effective nor efficient, which means goals not achieved and resources wasted. Now, Look at the blue one. The organization not effective, but efficient, which means goals not achieved and no wasted and no wasted resources. Now look at the green one, which is the best one. The organization is effective and efficient, which means goals achieved and no wasted resources, which means high productivity. Now, we can define performance effectiveness as an output measure of task or goal accomplishment. And performance efficiency can be defined as an input measure of the resource costs associated with the goal accomplishment. The changing nature of organizations. A change is a continuing theme in our society and organizations are no exception, of course. The following list shows some organizational trends and transitions relevant to the study of management. First, focus on valuing human capital. The premium is on high involvement for settings that rally the knowledge, experience, and commitment of all members. Second, demise of command and control. Traditional top-down, do as I say, bosses are giving away to participatory bosses who treat people with respect. Third, emphasis on teamwork. Organizations are becoming less hierarchical and more driven by teamwork that pulls the talents for creative problem solving. Fourth, preeminence of technology. Of course, developments in computer and information technology keep changing the way organizations operate and how people work. Fifth, importance of networking. Organizations and their members are networked for intense, real-time communication and coordination. Seventh, new workforce expectations. A generation of workers is less tolerant of hierarchy and attentive to performance merit 
and the more informal and, of course, concern for work-life balance. Finally, concern for sustainability, which indicates that social values call for more attention on the preservation of natural resources for future generations and understanding how work affects human well-being.